how many husbands whose wives are not saved and they don't care how many wives whose husbands are not saved how many children whose parents are not saved look at me over 90 percent if not everyone if not everyone including myself you look at your immediate family or your extended family you will find people who you know are on their way to hell it's a highway to hell are we together now yeah i know that you hear people say this emotionally just preaching evangelism but i want to tell you something i don't mean to scare you but i want to seriously tell you there is a real place called hell there is a real place today like this called hell are we together the bible says and books were open listen to me books were open and another book was open which was the book of life hear what the bible says whosoever's name was not found written thereof the bible did say he was advised to wait somewhere he was cast into the lake of fire that was burning with brimstone and sulfur that's what the bible says The Bible says it is appointed unto man to die once. Listen carefully. It says afterwards the judgment. It didn't say after that a celebration. After it is appointed unto man. You see, in my little life and the privilege that ministry has afforded me, please listen carefully. I have had the opportunity to be at several funerals. I've had the opportunity to watch the bodies of people I knew were once alive, now dead. At that point, brothers and sisters, please look at me. Whether you have a PhD, listen please. Whether you had a first class, are we together? No matter what it is that you have had that you call your accomplishment in life. I don't care what you have done. I don't care where you have gone to at in five minutes not breathing it becomes useless has it occurred to you i can be standing here looking nice with my kaftan and no breath and i'm gone this body lies lifeless you will wake it you will pray on it you will prophesy on it you will pour oil on it the body lies down lifeless what does that tell you it tells you we have to focus on the things that are eternal listen 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 seeing then that the relevance of the things we chase and pursue are only relevant for as long as this body is alive so if i give somebody school fees that's good he's going to school if you say you want to marry and i give you five hundred thousand to help you and marry you will like me you'll be very happy but the moment your body this body you are seeing can no longer host your spirit everything becomes useless jesus gave us a parable that is so touching about a man um lazarus and the rich man do you still study your bible or the job took it away There was a man who the bible says was very wealthy and there was another man who was lazarus i'm not talking of poverty and prosperity i'm talking of two people are we together now the bible tells us that the eternal destiny of that man was nothing like his life on earth brothers and sisters this is what the bible says if our hope is only in this life only in this life we are of all men most miserable have you seen them slaughter a chicken you've seen chicken one minute it has life trying to escape and you are very messless over it you put it down and in a few minutes the life is gone just like a vapor and that thing is lying down there and when you hold it two hours later you are about to eat it you look at this this was once alive now it's in your hands and you are about to eat it the same way like that chicken listen nobody may eat you but i guarantee you a time will come listen please very importantly a time will come where 
this mortal body will either be laid to rest or will be translated to another body it really doesn't matter which one comes as far as the glory that is coming is concerned because it makes no difference but one thing i can tell you is this there is no body no body who is not born again who has received the son who will make heaven one two there is no body who has not received who, who has rejected christ that will spend eternity with him because it's not about heaven we are still coming back to the earth but the question is so that where i am there you may be only true believers shall be right our uncles are not true believers listen our aunties are not true believers we watch them we know they are not born again our colleagues are not true believers but we do not care we do not know that it is a responsibility do you know the last time i checked which was many years ago statistically eight people die per second how many people from when koinonia started till now calculate if we are still working by that eight people and part of all those people who died some were tongue-talking christians some were pastors some were prophets are we together now they've all died no matter what you think about them see this life is brief I, i'm waking us up to focus on the things that represent priorities for the kingdom god has priorities and we must we must train ourselves to adjust in the midst of all of the blessings i'm still going to talk about a few more things but i have to press this as a foundation so winning is not a suggestion so winning kingdom advancement establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men it's not a suggestion it's not for pastors it's not for those who are free and don't have a job yet no take it down mike i want to sing a song don't mind song when it's all been said and done there is just one thing that matters did i do my best to live for truth did i live my life for you when it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what i've done for love's reward will stand the test of time lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find pure as gold in my clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life every other thing in life only becomes meaningful when your eternal destiny is secured did you hear what i said every other thing in life hear me please every other thing in life i don't care what it is is only relevant when you can guarantee that your soul is saved and then you must extend that passion to as many people as the grace of God upon your life can make happen every time there is a bereavement they send me text messages and I get a text message oh apostle so 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 has died and you know the first thing that comes to my heart most times over 90 percent of the people send me a text and say apostle i know if you speak a word he will come back to life frankly speaking i believe in miracles i believe in miracles i've seen great miracles in my life and in this ministry 
but my concern listen my concern is not so much about bringing the person back to life listen as it is knowing that this person died in christ you can die in money where are you going mention it you can die in education where are you going to you can die in politics where are you going to die in an aircraft the only ones that are wise are those who live in christ and if need be die in christ it's not that you die in what you can die in worry it's still hell you can die in stress it's still hell please hear what i am saying you see people dying all the time and we keep watching them there are people today every time you think of you know right now based on the bible except if there are other mysteries we do not yet currently know i believe that there are many supernatural things that we cannot all explain but as far as the revelation of the bible and our understanding of it now has afforded us we know that those who did not die in christ are lost and gone they left their houses behind listen to me they left their certificates behind i'm not saying those things are not important but they are only important listen they are only important when the major things are in place is your father born again if you hear right now look at me listen wherever your father is if you hear right now that he drops dead will you rejoice will you cry in joy or will you cry in grief if you hear that your mother has gone to be with the lord will you rejoice will you cry in joy or cry in grief what of your roommate what of you because there are people who will never take this thing seriously you will always come for koinonia you will always go to churches and do a lot of things but are you saved it's a very serious question that you are working for god does not mean you are saved that you have a christian name joshua jesus our salvation no 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 As we worship you let all the world come and see how the mercy we receive from you can set men free that's very important they need to come we need to participate in getting this is not adding members to a church listen listen now this is where I have a problem come when when we go for evangelism for most people sadly speaking we are just shopping for larger congregations now of course it should culminate into church growth but the foundation listen is to grant that this person has an opportunity to be turned to righteousness do you know i can get this brother saved filled with the holy spirit loving the lord and as i've gotten him saved i've gotten 200 other people saved in him are we together because this person now will take those values look how some of you a few of you that have really participated in soul winning look what has happened through your life to others i'll never forget one of our ladies years ago she might be streaming following right now and um her entire family they were not born again none of them was saved then she got born again and god granted her grace i think her younger brother also got born again and then eventually you know she kept pressing passionately and intentionally the mom now got born again it was left the father alone that man refused and said no way he will not get born again i know if you ask her what she wanted god to do in her family it's not to build a house it's not to go and build a house in the village and prove a point she just wanted everyone to be saved i remember very clearly like yesterday the day her dad was saved when her father was saved she called me crying 
we met around then in the campus chapel and she said look her whole family had been saved do you know when he was saved his family members had to drive to his place and they say which worry made you to give up what you were practicing and give your life to jesus if his finances we can sort it out and the man got saved under living faith so that 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 fire has come to stay the joy of salvation when we give testimonies and we say praise the lord I built a house somebody just built a house and he dashed me we stand up we roll on the ground but when we say praise the lord someone god saved we just clap a hand please go and sit down because of our priority our priority i've seen a few people that have trusted god to be saved get saved and i've been surprised at the joy the joy that filled my heart who in your life needs to be saved through you not needs to be saved who in your life needs to be saved through you there are people who the prophetic mandate is on you to bring their salvation and you're not doing anything about it i challenge every mother here and every father here after this meeting go and sit down with your children if you can especially some of the little ones don't allow this our little the moment they have gotten to an age of discretion if they can steal if they can fight they can be saved talk to them are we together now you don't allow children just leave them around a child who insult you visitors are talking is answering back that means he understands jesus you can call him and preach intelligently and let that child say when a child has not gotten to the age of discretion the salvation of the parents cover the child but the moment he gets to the age of discretion from that's why there are no children in hell because the salvation of their parents will cover them god bless you we have a threefold participation let's rush quickly Threefold participation. There are only three ways we can partner with God in soul winning and the establishment of the Lordship of Christ across the hearts of men. Only three ways. And I want to teach you now, please pay attention because it has nothing to do with whether you are a pastor. Listen, I think I should press this in. This is not the work of pastors. This is not the work of apostles and prophets and missionaries and mission agencies. This is not the work of men and women of God. This is a responsibility that is saddled on every believer. It's just that we are not taught that when you are saved, we teach people about their rights in Christ. But we never teach people about their responsibility in Christ. The only reason you have rights is for responsibilities. You cannot be taught about your right in Christ. The inheritance that you have gotten and not be taught what your kingdom responsibility is. With every privilege comes responsibility. Every privilege. There's no privilege that does not come with responsibility. If I buy you a car, then you start maintaining it. You come to me to maintain the car, I return it back because it means you are not qualified. It's a privilege, but I, I, I give you that on the strength of an understanding that you can maintain it. Is that true? When God gives you an anointing, he expects you to press to gain the character dimension to sustain it. That's the responsibility that comes with that privilege. If you love privileges without responsibility then you are an irresponsible person so we have a threefold participation the first dimension or the first participation the first way any one of us can participate actively in establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men number one is the ministry of warfare and intercession write it down the first participation that everyone and no one has an excuse because you don't pay for prayer there's no you, it's not something you go and wait for an atm no the grace is there once you are alive and you are in christ 
the ministry of what warfare and intercession why do we have to pray so that the hearts of men will be open to receive the gospel we are going to look at a number of scriptures second corinthians 4 please verse 3 to 4 second corinthians 4 verse 3 to 4 and then you give us first corinthians chapter 6 chapter 16 verse 9 the ministry of warfare and intercession look up please we're going to read a lot of scriptures we we'll have to be very fast but if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are what so as obvious as these truths are when somebody is not in christ it's not as easy as you think it is there is there are lots of things you can believe now because the spirit of god is in you to help you believe how you know it was the spirit of god is because you criticize this before you criticize praying in tongues you criticize a lot of things but now you have embraced it it's by the spirit it's not just by growth and maturity physically speaking if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are lost aha uh -huh, next verse verse 4 please in whom the god of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not are you seeing why they believe not because although they are looking at you their minds their spirits are blinded lest the light of the glorious gospel of christ who is the image of god should shine unto them so you can see that man the moment you leave koinonia he looks at you and says now what, what, what kind of thing are you put doing you sing for over over 30 minutes are you the only one I mean, can't you just sing praise and worship for 10 minutes and hurry up and go don't just insult them there is something that is making that happen when they say shout jesus or do this and you are doing and somebody's watching and say, ah, how can responsible people behave like this there is a spirit that makes spiritual things of non-effect to people who are not in christ that's what necessitates the ministry of intercession if your wife or your husband is obviously not open to the things of god don't hate them don't fight there is a spirit listen there are spirits that stand to make sure that people do not return to god in truth so you can see someone who is a smoker you will sit down and talk to him while you are talking to him the guy will say Kai, this will be the last cigarette and you are watching him you are even encouraged then you rub his back and say you are a good boy two weeks later you check his pocket and it's not just one you will see a packet because there is a spirit listen counseling never saves people you don't counsel people into salvation that encounter with the seed of the word of god that breaks everything because it's not physical like falling under the anointing we have little respect for it if someone falls under the anointing it has a physical manifestation and so we say wow great power was on him but when someone gets born again most times we trivialize it because we think it is not supernatural enough the ministry of warfare and intercession have you noticed for those of you who live with so many people who are not born again is when you pray and return from spiritual things that there are hostilities have you noticed that the moment you finish praying that's the day you will fight with your father or your mother it's not normal there are spirits they respond just like daniel finished praying and the spirits began to move certain people in babylon to come and put a decree so you finish praying you just rounded up three days fasting as you are rounding it up there is war all of a sudden your food becomes salty madam you are in trouble no there is a spirit look men are slaves to the spirits that control or influence them this body is a is a dumb terminal this body is only an executor of whatever spirit controls or influences it you have to know this about people so that you can learn to love people this is one of the understandings that sponsors loving people it's difficult to love people based on the way they behave you have to look beyond that you have to access an information that is more than that so if your younger brother tries to fight you and beat you and you look at him and say i will kill you you are fighting in the flesh there is a spirit no sane person will do that 
when a woman carries bottle and breaks the head of her husband in response to no money or anger do you think that i know she thought she was just angry look at jesus and peter get thee behind me satan ah -ah. peter looks at jesus and says me he says look peter i know you don't know but i am seen in the realm of the spirit satan came and perched at your soul and took advantage of your voice to advise me not to go to the cross and he saw it he said satan desired to sift you like wheat but i prayed for you that your faith fail not he said and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren because he will come and do the same to them demons speak to men they don't have to be under the influence of or, 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 under under the anointing there are many people saying nonsense you know it's a spirit that is speaking there's a way you see men talk you know that's not them an interchange between them and another spirit the same way you hear a man speak and you know this is not an ordinary man speaking it is got to be a divine spirit speaking through him so you have to pray when you religiously stand up to go and win souls like that you can return with casualties you must pray challenge those spirits that's what we do in koinonia before every service the prayer department is praying i am praying we, we clear the atmosphere so when we come we have already sent an incense of prayer and once we begin to speak the word of god penetrates the hearts of people like he's doing yours now and when you make the altar call you see people coming and you are even surprised seeing those who are coming because prayer and intercession listen when the spirits that influence men and blind their minds leave you will be surprised to see how innocent and fragile those people are